Hello. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Birds chirping outside. Nice. I don't think I got eight hours sleep last night, but I feel like I only got like six and a half. I remember yesterday at work when the receptionist said, how are you? And you just said, yeah, I'm eating too much meat. Oh, they tried being an actor. It's a ridiculous profession I could imagine. Can I wear white pants? I don't think I'm going to go. Did I precipitate my parents to lose? Ah, morning anxiety. My old friend, for years, every single morning when I woke up, I would get extreme anxiety to the point where sometimes I would not even want to get out of bed because I just couldn't bear to face all the things I had to do. I would almost be afraid to go to sleep because I knew that my next conscious moment was going to be anxiety. I didn't want to do it anymore. So I went down every YouTube rabbit hole, I read every book, and after all that research, I no longer get anxious in the morning. And I'm going to tell you the secret to it because it's not really a secret. It's all over the internet. I just put it in a neat little package. So I'm going to give you a list of tools. Just take one. If it works, you don't need to use all of them. Oh shit, my screen turned off in the background and made me look like an idiot. All right, well, let's just do some basic science to start off. Where is anxiety coming from chemically? Often the culprit is cortisol, which is a stress hormone that's released when we need to take action. In the past, this was good because we were running away from lions. But in the last couple hundred years, we've got pretty comfortable. And now when it's released, it's usually because we have a presentation at work or because Chad tried to give you a high five and you missed it. Now you feel like an idiot and you're sitting up thinking about it. Cortisol helps us take action. And what is our first action of the day waking up so often our cortisol is at a peak in the first hour of our day all right so let's go through my system i'm going to do it in chronological order so you can set up your day the same way if you want number one prepare the night before so I like to lay out my clothes for the next day, maybe pack my bag. That way when I wake up, everything's kind of ready to go. It just shaves off a bit of that morning rush and the rush causes anxiety. Basically anything you can prepare the night before that you'll have to do in the morning, do it. Number two, telling myself how I want to feel the next morning. You're lying in bed, getting ready to sleep. Just run through how you want to feel in the morning. You want to feel peaceful, rested, open, calm. Basically, if you're worrying about all the things you have to do tomorrow in the moments before you go to sleep, your first moment of waking is going to be that worry coming back. It's like Snake, where he goes at one end and there's no gap and he comes out the other end. Am I that old? Is that too old of a reference? So yeah, set your intentions the night before and you will bring them into the morning with you. All right, you've slept, it's the morning. You've just woken up from that dream where you and Donkey Kong were fighting in a coliseum with pool noodles. Now this takes a bit of practice, but when you wake up, there is a small gap before the world comes rushing in where you have a chance to dictate your direction. So here is where I like to do a couple of little affirmations. These are some of my favorites. I focus on what I can control. I have plenty of time to do all the things that I wanna do. I'm a really cool guy. I do one thing at a time. Especially this one helps me. We know that switching between tasks is not very efficient for our brain. I remind myself that I do one thing at a time and I give my full attention to that thing. Slows me down and I get more done. And then I like to end with a little bit of gratitude. So I'll just list three or four things I'm grateful for. They can't be anything I've ever said I've been grateful for before because that forces you to dig deep and find new things to be joyful about. I stole this from that uh, Phil Stutz, Jonah Hill documentary on Netflix, which is great. Check it out. Bookending my sleep with just those positive affirmations has made a world of difference. So let me know if it works for you as well. All right, great. We're up. We're awake. We're out of bed. First thing, don't go on, don't go on your phone. Don't touch your... Don't touch your... Don't touch it. This step I call the Huberman Trinity after the great Dr. Andrew Huberman who's putting out all that amazing scientific content right now on everything. Step one, no phone. I do everything I can to not do email, not do social media. Step two, get out in the sunlight as soon as you can. The single best thing you can do for your sleep, your energy, your mood, your wakefulness, your metabolism is to get natural light in your eyes early in the day. Don't wear sunglasses to do it. it takes about 10 minutes or so. And step three, exercise a little bit if you can. It doesn't have to be much. We'll take a walk during that time. I generally will then do some sort of physical workout. You do some push-ups. I like to go to the gym. The physiological side Sometimes we do all those steps right and we still feel super anxious. That's fine. So how can we actually attack the anxiety directly in the moment? The number one tool I've found and scientifically shown to be the fastest way to calm ourselves is the physiological sigh. Again, this is from Andrew Huberman. I will let him explain it. You could do it through your mouth, but it works best through the nose. It's inhale and then you sneak a little bit more air in at the very end, followed by an extended exhale and you offload the maximum amount of carbon dioxide. And we found in our laboratory and other laboratories have found that just one, two, or three of those physiological sighs brings your level of stress 
down very, very fast. Double inhale, long exhale, offload carbon dioxide, chill out. And that's a tool you can use any time of the day, any time you're feeling super anxious. I often do it before I do a self tape because I'm always in my head like worried about it. Next one's easy. I don't have my coffee yet. No coffee in the first 90 minutes of the day. First of all, having coffee kind of makes us anxious. Second of all, if you have it in the first 90 minutes of the day, you will have more of a crash. Adenosine builds up in your bloodstream. It's what makes you feel fatigued. Caffeine essentially blocks the adenosine receptor, but then when caffeine wears off, the adenosine that's still around binds to that receptor and you crash, you feel really sleepy. Mm. So one thing that you can do is when you wake up in the morning, don't ingest caffeine for the first 90 minutes or so. So that's how I start the day. But now we've got two bonus levels here. These are kind of underlying principles that help the rest of it work. Be consistent. Consistency is everything. I'd much rather you take one of these tips and do it consistently than try to do all of it for three days and just be like, ah, this is too much and then drop the whole thing. All right, so all of these tools are great and they help me every single day, but let's go a level deeper. It's also worth checking if your anxiety is coming from an underlying source. Sometimes I'm really anxious just because there's chemical reactions and it's a familiar pattern and I'm lost in overthinking and things like that. But sometimes my anxiety is just a really healthy reminder to check in with myself. So, you know, sometimes we're avoiding a difficult conversation with a friend or we're putting off starting a new project that we've wanted to do for ages. Sometimes we're falling behind on something and we know it's gonna take a lot of work to catch up, but we keep pushing it away and away and it keeps getting worse and worse. It's very reasonable that those things will make us anxious. Sometimes I've had to admit that to myself, that I'm just being a bit lazy. And if I take action, the anxiety will melt away. And it does, perfect example. Just before I made this video, I was getting really anxious because I just didn't feel like doing it. I didn't feel like setting up the camera and putting my leg over my bed here so that I can fit in the frame properly. And I'm grateful for my anxiety because it gave me just a little bit of extra fuel to just get started on doing it. And now that I'm in the thick of it, like right now, and I'm doing like the end of it right now, I'm so happy. I'm so happy with what I've done and I'm excited to edit it and show you guys this video as a neat, perfect little package. Perfect is a strong word. So anyway, that's my roadmap for how I deal with morning anxiety. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, um, turn to page 394. Basically anything you can, basically anything you can, you can, basically anything you can, you can, why is it so hard to say? Basically anything you can, why am I doing that? A lot with my face. I can teach you to bottle, fame, brew, glory, and even put a stopper in death. I feel like my Alan Rickman is too comedy. <laughs>